Okay, well, it's 530. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. We will first go around and do roll call. So um, we'll just speak up and say our name. I will start. I'm Ryan Welch, the chair of OSAC. I'm Kate Senecal. I'm the vice chair. Rainer Kunz, member. Tracy Collar, member. Marcy Strass, member. Sean Samuelson, member. Frank Parker, member. Thank you. And we're missing Joel, but he also said he might have conflicts getting here right at 530. And I hadn't heard from him. And also, uh, Sandy Hammerly let me know that uh, she wasn't feeling well and she was trying to find a replacement. Uh, it doesn't look like she was able to, so we will continue without her and hope that she feels well soon. So and I'm Allison that, James, town oh, staff. Sorry. Sorry, Allison. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's go to the agenda approval. Does anyone want to make any corrections or changes to the agenda? Yeah, I'd like to add in um, uh, setting up a meeting with Boulder County, which was our Q1 uh, work plan <laughs> mission. I guess we need to vote on that. I mean, I'm not in favor of that just because of COVID and everything that's going on. I just don't feel the timing's right to be asking for meetings. Um, but if you guys, if we want to have more of a discussion, we can vote to amend the agenda and extend the meeting time. Can we have a quick check in? What was the purpose of that meeting? I don't recall. Well, we need to not discuss it until we amend the agenda. Okay. <clears throat> I vote so, to include it. <laughs> okay, so you make a motion. John? Uh, sure, I make a motion to include uh, inquiring about Boulder County uh, co meeting. Uh, didn't you say Broomfield? Uh, Broomfield, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Any seconds? I second that. This is Tracy. Okay, all in favor? I mean, aye. we can talk, I. All opposed? I have a okay. hot stop at 7.30, so. Okay. I mean, I'm fine to have it on the agenda, I just have to leave at 7.30. Sure. So it passes, so we'll make it the first thing we discuss. It'll be a quick discussion. Um. Okay, we are now in public comment. So if you would like to um, come into public comment, please raise your hand and Allison will bring you in. Um, we do have a tight agenda. So if you are gonna talk, I am gonna hold public comment to five minutes maximum for the evening. So thank you. And the first person, um, just so you know the protocol, you'll state your name and address and then make your comment. Thanks. Yes, this is Debbie Yates and my address is 115 Sixth Avenue in Superior <clears throat> and I am the chair of uh, the Cultural Arts and Events Committee, the CAPS Committee. And we would just like to let you know that the CAPS Committee has formed a subcommittee to choose and work on a public art project for the Ormond Roche Trailhead. And I know this has been discussed on your committee previously and is also a part of the Cultural Arts and Events Public Spaces Master Plan. And the chair of that committee is going to be Claire Dixon. And um, we have a group of CAPS members who are actually on this subcommittee to look at the art and choose the art. And this will be in <clears throat> um, cooperation or work with hopefully members of the OSAC team that would like to be on the CAPS committee to choose the public art for the trailhead. So basically we're looking for volunteers and you will sit in on those subcommittee meetings with the CAPS members 
and Dina Miller, who is the uh, Town of Superior Liaison for the CAPS Committee. And um, that's basically what uh, you would like to see from you guys. Any questions? Yeah, Debbie, how would you like us to submit some names? Would you like, like people to submit them all to me and then I can get you names over? That, kind of that in sounds one. Like the most efficient. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, if anyone's interested, just email me, um, you know, when you can. And then, Debbie, I'll try to get that over to you as soon as I can. Okay. When, when would that, when would those meetings start? Um, I am guessing probably within the next week or two. We have our side of the committee set up, and Dina Miller is already um, basically putting together different uh, types of art. And so the subcommittee will look at all the different types of art and then narrow it down. And then it is voted on by the committees. And then I believe it goes to the Board of Trustees um, because of the, the budget on this is fairly substantial. So I, I believe it has to be voted on by the Board of Trustees. Allison, you would know that more than I would, but um, that's kind of the process. So we're, we're up and running and ready to go. And Debbie, how many people are you looking for? Um, I would say probably no more than three. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for doing this. You are welcome. We're yep. very excited. That is a stunning trailhead. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Just yeah, disgusting. it really is. Yeah, so, Debbie, thank you. Well, I'll be in touch with you. I'm hoping by the end of the week. Okay. So if you don't hear anything from me by then, please just reach out and I'll, I'll move it along. And remind everybody. That would be great. Great. Any Thank other you. Before I leave. Okay. I don't think so. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a bye. We had another hand raised, but it disappeared. There we okay. go. Here's our next person. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. You're promoted. Just make sure to unmute. Okay. There we go. I just did. Okay. Can you hear awesome. me now? We can. Thank you. Yes. I can't see. Can you see me? No, no. but that's okay. Oh, we can. <laughs> just, just hit the, uh, the video button on the bottom. Uh, I don't have that. That's if okay. you want, just that's yeah. okay. That's all right. Um, first of all, it's nice to see you all. Thank you. I'll try to make this brief. Um, I um, I just want to congratulate you on the uh, CenturyLink property. That's an amazing, amazing um, purchase, and it looks like a beautiful property. So uh, I'm glad to see that the funds are going towards something like that. Uh, and Unfortunately, we couldn't tuck Zaharias in with it, but you know, there were restrictions on that. So, um, but congratulations, that's great. Uh, the next thing is, is um, the Zaharias um, that brings me to the HHR. So I just wanna give you a few highlights. There were a flock of bluebirds there this spring, which is amazing. It was before the snowstorm. There was wood, there were wood ducks. I don't know if you know wood ducks, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, they were also up at the River Bend Park. Um, 15 avocets. Last year we had 10 as the most. We had 15 this year because they did lower the water again. So that was amazing. And a pair of, of osprey were seen um, hovering over the water and then diving down, catching a huge fish, struggling with it to get to shore, and it finally killed it and ate it. So, I mean, where else in town can you find something like that happening, like a Na National Geographic <clears throat> channel? So it's too bad the town doesn't recognize the Zaharias property as a great asset to um, access to the HHR. And, um, you know, I'm, I just wanted to say, if something happens and it goes down and they don't sign it over next week and, and a few weeks later, um, let's see if we can, you know, get something going. But um, anyhow, um, the prairie dogs. I think you had questions about the prairie dogs. Do you want me to just talk about that? Um, we had gotten an, an email from Kelly about mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the fact that it looked like the prairie dogs were being um, killed. It looked like that they were putting equipment on their holes mm -hmm. and um, 
looked like they were being killed. And she also spoke on that at the um, town meeting. Right. Um, I live right across the street, so I was watching it. They had traps out there for about two weeks, live traps, and they did catch a few. I didn't see them catch any, but I talked to the people that were over there doing this, and, um, and they said, um, you know, we tried trapping them. We couldn't do that. We couldn't catch them, but the ones that we did trap, we gave to the Raptor um, Rehabilitation Center, which is a way that all of Boulder County gets rid of their prairie dogs recently because they can't relocate them. There's too many of them right now. So that's one way to get them back into, you know, the environment um, in the food chain. Um, but they were over there gassing them. I went over and I, I asked immediately, I said, what, what are those hoses doing down the hole? And apparently they had to gas with carbon monoxide. They didn't do poison, um, just carbon monoxide. And um, uh, carbon monoxide just kills the carcass. It doesn't leave a toxin or a, way, a poison in their carcass for other animals to get back in the food chain. So that's good. So I emailed Alex Aranello, who he's the head honcho, you know, on the construction project of 88th. So he said, we're aware of the prairie dog policy. We hired a firm to follow the town policy on removal, which was great. And um, an environmental firm was hired and followed the guidelines along with those of the Colorado Division of Wildlife. So that's where that stands. It's probably the, you know, the, the best possible outcome. At least it's not poisoned and if there's not poison in the food chain there. I said, all you have to do is come over and bang pots and pans and they'll just scurry a hundred feet underground because they're all just gonna go in their tunnels and go on the other side of your little fence. Um, and he just laughed and he says, I know, he says, I hate doing this. So that's, it sounds like the, the town handled it as best they could. And was that all prep for construction or what was the reasoning? Uh, that was the shoulder for 88th Street construction. It was just the edge of Zaharias. And they said they didn't want to bury them alive, which was, you know, understandable. Now they can dig out, but you know, when you have a big truck like that, big bulldozer going over, it probably would crush them. So the timing is unfortunate because they have their young at the end of May and um, yeah, you just can't, it's, it's too bad. It's too bad, but they did what they could do from my end, from what I understand. So I was glad they didn't poison them. Kathy, you drafted the regs for the town of Superior and Prairie Dogs. Hey, um, actually, we're at five minutes for public comment, oh. so we need to, and this public comment is also not discussion. It is okay. supposed to be public comment, and I, then we I discuss just... it later in the agenda. Oh, so okay. we, need to, we need to wrap this up, but Kathy, thank you so much for coming in and, and letting us know what you observed and, and the birds that you've seen out there. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Good luck. You guys do a great job. Thank Have you, Kathy. Day. All right, bye-bye. Okay, hey, Allison, do we have any more? I don't see any more hands raised, so I guess we can move on. So, all uh, right, lively public comment for us, so that's good. Um, okay, so let's, we'll, we'll just add the Broomfield meeting at the beginning. Um, I will just let you know my thought process on this. Yes, it was on the agenda due to COVID-19 and not being able to meet in person for who knows when, I just was delaying that on the agenda because of those reasons. Um, if the group feels we want town staff to reach out and try to do a meeting, a Zoom meeting with them, we could. So I'll leave that up to the group to chime in. I personally don't, I think the meetings like those are gonna be hard on Zoom, especially when it's a group of people we don't know, but that's just my opinion. Discussion? What uh, is the meeting supposed to be about? Really, we try to come up with an agenda for things we could talk about with neighboring open space committees. What things can we learn that they're trying to pursue or trails that they're after or other things. Last year, we met with Louisville and we talked about the uh, Davidson Mesa underpass and making sure that both sides were committed to promoting that to Boulder County as the number one trail we would like to see improved. 
Um, we talked about a ranger program and the kind of success they're having with a ranger. And those were the highlights that I remember for the meeting, but it's those kind of things. You know, we tend to find enough in common to have discussion. And I can give the group a little bit of info um, on what's going on currently in a lot of um, parks and rec and open space departments. A lot of people still have a lot of staff restrictions. They're um, trying to figure out openings for various um, town amenities and staffing um, and juggling a lot of these different dynamics as they change. So, um, you know, just be aware that we could reach out to them if the group decides to and you know it may be pushed off for a while just because of the nature of kind of current capacity for everybody. Sean are you asking for this because you're going off the committee soon? Is that the timing issue? In part um, I mean I just like to get it on the books. I have no problem having a zoom meeting. I've been on large zoom meetings before. Um, yeah I know it's a it's you know, complicated when you have, you know, twice as many people online as we do right now. But, uh, you know, I don't see it being any different than being in person, right? Uh, I can see everybody, uh, people are going to be queued the same way. I, I, you know, that's just me, though. I, you know, I'm, I'm off <laughs> beginning of July, but I would like to see it on the book somehow that we are reaching out to them and maybe put a stake in the ground and say, could we get together, you know, uh, sometime in the next month or so? If not, then you want to move it out to like Q3. I just, again, it was a Q1 work item. I want to make sure it's on uh, the docket, the a future agenda. We have okay. tried or desired to meet with Broomfield for a really long time and we've never had any success. So I think it would be great to continue to attempt. I'm not sure we'll have success. And my personal opinion is that these remote meetings are gonna continue for a lot longer than we expect or desire. So we might just wanna um, deal with that reality. Probably. I just wanted to let everybody know I've made Karen a co-host just in case for some reason I crash. She's my backup. <laughs> oh, that's a good, I had that same issue today at work where we didn't have that and it didn't go well. Um, I was going to chime in. So I think, um, I do think we're going to be doing this for quite a while. And um, I just, for me, I would like to know, and I don't think right now is the time, I would like to know more about what is actually on the agenda and the, the urgency around the things that would be on the agenda and whether or not it would be worth pushing. Because I do, I was listening to the board meeting the other night and um, you know, Leslie and Brian were on talking about what's going on with Parks and Rec right now and I, they don't have time for us right now and it's not because they don't want to, it's just there's way more pressing things. And I just think I would like to be careful and thoughtful about how we're asking Allison um, to use her time. And if there were things that I felt like they were urgent, then sure, but I, right now I can't think of anything that uh, would be considered urgent that we would need to meet with them soon. So I, I, I would vote for putting it off. So in my opinion, we do have uh, a few things we can talk about, urgency, I don't know. Um, you know, we have the CenturyLink land. Uh, I, I don't know what their status is with that. And then they have some land on the other side of the road that is for sale. Uh, I just curious as to what the plans are with that, if that's on their open space agenda um, as a potential target. Uh, there's the Rocky Mountain Greenway. There's the, you know, the parkway that's going through and, and how that might impact trails. And I mean, you know, we got the Broomfield Airport. There's a whole bunch of Broomfield related topics. Um, it's just a matter of urgency. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we don't, if the team doesn't feel that it's urgent, then we won't. I, it doesn't matter to me. I, again, for me, it's just to get them on the docket uh, because we, you know, we can make up a pretty good size agenda to discuss with them. And regardless, I mean, what's the harm in reaching out to them, right? If they say no, that's fine. Or propose a new date, a date for a date. So Sean, just a, a thought on that. 
it sounds like what you're talking about are getting updates, um, which I think would be really good to get and probably something we could just do in writing. Um, but if there's a discussion topic, then that's a different thing. So for my mind, a discussion topic would warrant a meeting. But the things I think I, I've heard so far suggest it's really just information exchange. I don't know. I think they could be, I think it'd be easier and faster to disseminate information verbally than by email. I mean, each one of those topics could go on, right? The Greenway, trails, open space, co, you know, co-open space. It could be an hour at least, you know, to discuss some of these things. Again, just my two cents. Another idea is that the, you don't need to meet with the whole committee of Broomfield and just the people interested from our OSAC could meet with a couple of people who might be interested. So it could be a little more of a small meeting. Yeah, and I, I had also reached out to, gosh, who did I run? I ran into someone on their committee at Chili Fest and I forget his name. I think someone on this committee knows him personally or maybe it was someone who got off the committee. I thought Peter, Peter. knew him. Oh, Peter knew him. But as I was talking to him, he said, yeah, if you ever want to just meet sometime for coffee or talk about it, you know, he was open for that. Now, we have to be a little bit careful because it probably needs to be, you know, if we have any more than two, it needs to be public record and all of our meeting rules. Um, you know, he seemed somewhat interested. I just, my biggest concern is I think we're going to get blown off. I think I think Broomfield has so much they're trying to deal with, just like our Parks and Rec, that we might upset them with them saying, why are you coming at us with this when we're trying to figure out COVID? Um, but I don't have a good feel for that. Um, I mean, Allison, you can always just ask and see what their response is. And I mean, maybe a soft pedal answer, just say, hey, our work plan was to reach out. We've always wanted to have a meeting with you guys if, if you think that's something you'd like to do or, you know, if, you know, is that something we could put on the books later this summer? If, okay, well, let's just go that route and see what happens. But in the meantime, um, Sean, if you wouldn't mind, you know, let's circulate topic ideas because if they come back, they're going to, the next thing they're going to say is what is the agenda? Um, and I've got some things that are left over from last time when we talked to Louisville, but if you have ideas, just throw them my way and we'll, we'll collect up topics for an agenda. Sure. So, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, moving on national trails day. So I think this one's pretty quick. Uh, national trails day will be canceled. Um, we are canceling it just because we don't, you know, instead of rescheduling it, just because we can't put another date out there. We don't know when, and Allison, maybe you can help. You know, I, I tried to watch the entire board meeting, but I didn't see all of it. And did, I mean, I know they talked about big events, but did they talk about what we should be doing with this event? Well, this is right now considered a bigger event because it's more than 10 people um, right now. You know, the staff is tr really trying to um, look at the county guidelines, the CDC guidelines, all the different groups, and it changes day by day. So, you know, as soon as that, you know, frees up a little bit, we could revisit it. And I can keep everybody posted on that. Um, but that's kind of what's going on right now is that we're, you know, getting all of these different updates and the information changes as time goes along. Okay. So the official stance is canceled, right? I know you're working with the vendors and the communication, but let's say for some reason things, you know, drastically changed in the fall, we could reconsider putting it back together. Now, I think things would have to change pretty quickly because we probably need a month or two um, leeway to get the vendors in and get the communication out, but we should keep our ear to the ground. And if we have the opportunity, I think we should put it back. And part of that may look like reaching out to the vendors before we come up with a specific date to see what vendors we're really wanting to have come and see what their availability is and what their, uh, you know, guidelines that they feel they need to follow. And then we can maybe solidify the date after we know who could participate with us. 
Yeah, that's a good point, right? They just because we're opening, the vendors may not be comfortable yet to come back out. So it's a bummer, but considering everything the town's doing to shut down events, especially after ours, like 4th of July, this makes sense. So bummer. Okay, well, Allison, bummer for you too. I know you did a bunch of work to get it going and now you gotta go and do it all, but thank you for that. Well, we want everybody to be safe and we wanna follow the yeah. guidelines and so it's the best thing to do, but it is sad. Agreed. <clears throat> Any other discussion or comments? Okay. Well, hey, um, our next topic is CenturyLink. So, woohoo! <laughs> um, I don't know if you all made it that late at, in the meet board meeting when they were discussing it. Um, you know, it was pretty, I don't know, I dare say emotional, right? When, when that, I, I guess when I finally heard the trustees going around and hearing, you know, some of them I thought might be on the fence, but even some of them that I thought might be on the fence were saying, this is one of the reasons that I, I got on the, the board was to try to push this through. So uh, what a, what a night that was. Um, whew. Yeah. So a few things that we can discuss really like the, there's a few next steps. Um, they need to close. So there's still, I think, another six weeks uh, until the targeted closing date. And I don't know if the bonds have to be issued. Uh, they probably do so that we can pay CenturyLink. So, you know, the schedule may shift out a little bit, but uh, everyone seemed really confident that nothing would come up that would delay the closing of that property. So uh, it would be super exciting. and you know, maybe after it's closed, we could socially distant meet up there and, and uh, take a picture or, you know, cheers or something, but uh, pretty exciting. So the other thing that came up was naming. Um, I have ne not been on the committee where we have named open space. Um, so I actually don't know, you know, I'm kind of out of my element here on Number one, I don't know if there was anything in the agreement where it had to stay CenturyLink or CenturyLink got any sort of naming rights to the property. Um, just a thought, right? I don't know if that was something that was negotiated. And then the second part is, you know, how do we even determine if the board has an appetite for naming? You know, I was hoping Sandy would be here so she could tell me. I know we've talked about wanting to have projects to name different open spaces, but it just isn't clear to me what we should do here. So um, I don't, I mean, I guess we can talk about an approach. We could recommend it to the board that they name the open space and let them choose if they want to name it or if they want to just leave it as town of superior open space. So thoughts, suggestions? A question, Ryan, um, on the money side, I know that there was the expectation that some of the other localities would be contributing. Do you know anything about whether those deals came to be? I have not heard. Matt said he was going to keep me in the loop, but I, I just don't know yet. Um, and I do want to talk, I will talk a little bit about the finances because I learned a few little tidbits okay. about it. So let's, let's talk about the naming and then I'll talk about the fund um, sure. a little bit after. On the naming side, it, it, I, I think your idea of sort of the board charging us with coming up with something might, and we could certainly come up with something, but um, I think going to the board and testing their appetite might make sense. Yeah, I, I agree. Mean, and what I can do is I can just reach out to Sandy and just say, Sandy, when you're at the next retreat or when you um, do your comment, you know, your updates for the board meetings, um, if you could say that we're curious about this and just see if they, you know, if that turns into a discussion or not. Um, I mean, I do think we should wait till it's closed though, probably until we <laughs> get too far down the naming path, just in case something does happen that either delays it or, or it got, I'm not even going to say it, but um, something happens. So um, I'll take that action item to reach out to, to Sandy. Um, Could you, Ryan, also add that we have interest if the board is willing to have some input 
And on your other note about CenturyLink and naming rights, I think that's a good question. It, it would seem unlikely, but you never know. But I feel like this is a different open space parcel and that it's one of the few that is not named or um, known as the owner's last name. That's usually what they are. And this is instead of business. So it seems like a unique um, situation to me. I think naming, naming is a good idea. Um, it's the biggest purchase the fund has been doing and maybe for a long time. So it's significant. It should get a nice name. I agree that we should get a name on it. The one thing that, that I would point out is that it adjoins Coyote Ridge. So we might look at the possibility. I mean, are we going to call it one big piece of open space and rename Coyote Ridge? Or is there any subtlety because we have an existing town property that borders it? Yeah, that's a good point, Joel. So I think I think that we'll, we have some more room in our agenda later in the year that I think that we could have, I think we do a little bit of homework, um, figure out, you know, my guess is the board is going to want to choose just like always that we make a recommendation and then they will deliberate and, and choose, but I don't want to just make that a foregone conclusion because it's open space. They may defer that to our group. So let me get a few questions out and see if I can't uh, get Sandy to give us some more clarity on what we should be doing moving forward there. But it's kind of exciting, you know, to brainstorm on what we could call that. The um, interesting thing I've learned about that is that uh, the social trail along the top, if you find it on Google Maps, it's called the uh, St. Francis Trail. And I have no clue where that comes from. So it'll be interesting, you know, maybe we could even reach out to the Historic Commission. Actually, I maybe. do. Oh, you I do? Yeah, there was a guy that basically had a shovel that, well, illegally made the path. Uh, his middle name is Francis, and it's named after St. Francis, a CC or something, the patron saint of animals. Yeah. Anyway, that's what he claims on Google Maps. <laughs> okay, but that's an interesting piece of history on that land. So that's, you know, something to noodle on. So thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing I picked up on the finances was a couple things was that, you know, when we were reviewing the finances last time we were saying, well, where do the bond, where are the bonds getting paid for? What I realized though, is on that income line on our, in our open space fund, that isn't the full income from the 0.3% sales tax. The total, the full income goes to both the open space fund and to repay the bond. So that was sort of that mystery that was solved. But the other thing that I learned is that this, the open space fund makes about $1.1 million a year with that 0.3% open space tax. 400K of, going, of that is going to repay those bonds from 2005. About 250K of that will go to the new bonds that'll be issued for CenturyLink. And then there's this other about 100K that go into expenses that come out of our fund. And we need to talk about that just a little bit. So there you add that up, we're now at 750. So you're left with 350K. If those other municipalities don't come through with matching funds, Broomfield, Boulder, and Jeffco, uh, that's how that water fund will get repaid is from that 350K a year in sales tax. But if they do come through, it means that the fund will start to grow again, you know, about 350K a year. So originally when we were thinking about this, we thought that the deal would wipe out the fund for the next 10 to 20 years. But, you know, in, there's a, a fairly good chance that that won't be the case. So that I thought actually was very interesting to understand. And holy cow, you know, 1.1 million a year for our town to buy open space is pretty awesome. Um, I appreciate that info, Ryan. That's really, I think, the first time in all my years that that's been finally clear. So thanks for providing that. Well, it took some digging and it took some uh, just happened that uh, I forget the gentleman's name on the board meeting, the, the finance person who was discussing it made it very clear. Uh, you know, he just said that it's these four things and that, yeah, if, if the funds get matched, we'll still have a growing fund. 
I do have a quick update on this uh, Youth Corps as it pertains to Youth Corps. Um, I did notice that Youth Corps <clears throat> is canceled for, for the year. Oh, bummer. So, and I did want to bring that up because that came up in two board meetings ago and Sandy was texting me saying, oh my gosh, you know, did you, did you know about this? And my snap reaction was no. But after I thought about it, I do vaguely remember a meeting where we went over this when Ken Lish was the chair and it had come up. So it's just sometimes it's hard to remember all this. When we had gone through the, um, and actually let me share my screen here. Let me know when you all can see my screen. Oh no, I closed my, uh, Oh man. All right. I got to go find it again. I have it open, Ryan, but I don't know if I can share my screen or not. I'll, I'll have it here in just a second. I'll have it right here. Yeah. So right here on this line, when we talked about the, the budget, we went through this line pretty quick, right? It was here when we talked about it um, last time. I guess it isn't broken out as to how much, you know, it's about 30K a year. The and now, you know, now that it was brought up, I remember from the discussion with the committee before was that it did make sense to pay for this from open space because all the work that they're doing is, or a majority of the work that they were doing is out in open space. So um, there's really not much we need to do on this now, especially since it's canceled for the year and the board had already approved the funding through the open space fund, but it's something to remember as we go into, um, well, actually we do have budget discussions for next year on the agenda. So we could say we, we, strong, we feel strongly one way or the other that it shouldn't be included in, you know, out of our fund. I mean, 30K is, I mean, I think it's about what, 3% of the fund, the fund's income for the year. So it's not, it's, you know, it's not a ton of money, but over, you know, over 10 years or 20 years, that could be another five or six acres that we could have purchased. So there's different ways of looking at that. Is anybody so just, um, interested in the types of um, tasks that they do in open space? I am, Allison. Yeah, I am. Um, a lot of trail maintenance, um, noxious weed and um, plant removal. Um, water bars for trails, um, moving uh, crusher finds, which are crushed granite, gravel, and, you know, a lot of manual labor to um, kind of help to maintain open space. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you, Allison. And Allison, do you have an idea of like how are those all the things that they actually do here in the town of Superior? Or is that just a bigger picture view of what they do in general? Or what no, yeah, it is specific to work that they do in Superior. We host a couple of teams every year and we have, gosh, I wanna say 12 to 15 years, like a really long uh, history with this group and um, you know, some of the kids are superior residents, and so it's a way for younger um, kids to work in the summer and, you know, have a little bit of spending money, um, also get some experience, you know, for their resumes and um, work out in open space in the summer. So it is uh, town specific for sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so that was the other thing I wanted to bring up on CenturyLink. Um, other things anyone wants to discuss about with that property? The only comment I was gonna make is I was really pleased uh, to see it was unanimous board support. It looked like a lot of enthusiasm. Um, I mean, you guys have probably seen all the emails and uh, different comments throughout town, but everything I've received is positive. Everybody's very excited about it, and um, I am too, thrilled about it. Yeah, I agree, Joel. 
I mean, I, I think, I don't know if it's now, but at some point we should talk about, and it's probably with ProStack and maybe it's when we get into the pros, uh, the pros master plan. Allison, does that have a T on the end or no? Is it pros or prost? You've told me, I just forget. Prost. Prost, thank you. Um, that, I mean, I'm not that much of a biker, but there could be some amazing downhill bike trails through that property where like the trails are not today, it would be pretty amazing, but we would need to decide if that's a, a, you know, or discuss how we would even go forward with that. If we feel like it needs to be natural and not have those kind of trails, but um, you know, that is kind of the next things we could think about, you know, with that space. So. Since we're on that topic, I have a quick update about master plan while we're right in here. Um, the consultant was chosen and there's more coming and um, I don't know if everybody saw the proposal, um, you know, Mm-mm. if if anybody was interested in looking at it, it was in Monday night's agenda packet and, um, you know, I could also send it to the group if, if you So this, this was the it. proposal of the group that would be selected, not starting to propose amenities, right? Yes, this was the group that was selected. The agreement was okay. past Monday. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think the biggest key, the biggest thing I care about is how long will the process be? You know, is this a six month process? Is it a nine month year? Well, uh, our, I can go our, budget, our budget was, you know, for 2020. So hopefully we would have it done November, December. And okay. just so where you got the pros is the consultant is pros consulting. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh boy. Um, on Century Link, I just want to publicly congratulate everyone for working on it. I mean, it obviously we've done that via email, but and it wasn't just open space, there were zillions of other people, but it it was this committee that um, stayed determined, I think, and carried it across the finish line. So I think everyone should just be really proud of that. And Allison for being with us on this committee for so long and everyone, everyone else who played a big part. Yeah, I second that. I mean, previous board members that I worked with, you know, Patricia Dunham is the one that comes to mind probably the most for, for my tenure on the board. But then, you know, Justin Spring, you know, we didn't really get to interact with him, but I got to imagine the amount of work he did on this was just tremendous, right? But it had to be quiet, right? So we never really got to see it. The board members, Matt Magley or M- Manager Magley in there negotiating. Um, yeah, just, I mean, I actually have, I was thinking of maybe doing a, um, like a thank you card from OSAC to all the people involved. You know, I'd like to figure out a how that we all could sign that. It might be a little difficult you know, to get the cards to everyone, but I don't know. I mean, it, it's probably not sanitary to hand around a bunch of cards, <laughs> you know, for people to sign, but I have some ideas on how I think we can go about that. That all. About that, Ryan. I'm happy yeah, to help if you need any help. Or- my, my, my current thought would just be to um, get a good picture in the open space and then print it. You know, you can make a thank you card, but make it nice and big so it actually could be framed as well, but then on the inside or on the back to have, you know, some notes of thanks from, you know, the committee or however we wanted to do that. So, you know, maybe we could sign it and then disinfect it. And you know, I think it would mean more if all the committee members could sign it rather than, you know, just one person, but I'll have to figure out disinfectant or maybe we just agree to use gloves or I don't know, or maybe, you know, maybe there's a way, maybe there's a way that everyone could write a thank you, kind of just take a picture of it and then you could have it printed on the back rather than, than hand, hand done. That might actually be the right way to do this so that we don't have to, um, I guess, be not socially distant by signing something. So it wouldn't look as nice, but it would be a reasonable way to do it. So let me just do on that a little bit. If other people have ideas, let me know. But uh, I've been thinking about that for a bit. I just wanted to add kudos to uh, Tracy for finding Jeff. Yes, I agree. Thank you. And if we didn't have the Colorado Open Space Alliance Conference and the opportunity to go to that, we would have never found him. So um, yeah. everything lined up really, really well. But thanks. The uh, the one other thing I wanted to 
mentioned about it that that I took away from the board meeting was um, at least one board member, maybe more. Um, it's been a while since that happened. Uh, mentioned the fact that we had made a recommendation to the board, formal recommendation from OSAC to acquire that property, and that was a determining playing factor in this and their um, kind of activity to get this done. So, you know, sometimes when we go through these, it kind of feels like we're going through motions and they go nowhere, but this one was a slow play that really worked out, and so I think that was important to note. Wasn't it number one for a number of years? I haven't been on the committee that long, but I mean, it's forever, right? <laughs> Since I've worked here. <laughs> yeah, and I, reading up Until on this, recently. I mean, you can even go, some of the historians from the town might be able to even tell us that, you know, that property was one of the reasons that the open space tax was passed. And the bonding capacity was with, you know, some very specific properties in mind with CenturyLink being one. So, you know, I think, was it passed in 2001 or 2003? I don't remember, but over 15 years in the making of, mm -hmm. of getting that, that purchase done. So the, you know, a lot of things happened, but the stars aligned for us to purchase it. So go out and enjoy it. I'm, I'm sure most of you have, but it's awesome up there. As you can see from my background. <laughs> um, all right, any other discussion? Okay. Moving on to trail ranking. So thank you all for getting the, uh, your comments back to me. Um, we sent out the ranking, so you've all had a chance to look at this. There's two things that we need to figure out what to do with these rankings. And just so everyone um, is aware, the way that this works is we come up with our ranking, we send it off to ProStack, they come up with their ranking, we put it together Sometimes there may be a little bit of negotiation, you know, a few, in, in some years, you know, ProStack has said, wow, we really want this to be, like these two were tied, one was lower, we just like to flop it and, you know, or change the, the rank. And so we have those discussions. Um, so I guess the first, this first part of this is, we need to figure out how to break these ties. So if you can see on my screen, right, there's, there are quite a few that have the same number. And I didn't go back and look what happened last year on this, but just on how we do it by doing a three, two, one, that it came out with quite a few ties here. Uh, don't look at the rank column yet. I just started filling in some things, but it doesn't mean anything currently. So, um, so we need to figure out how to break these ties. And then the other thing we want to discuss is, you know, what do we want to do around discussion around how people ranked or what they ranked? I mean, we've got probably 20 or 30 minutes to discuss this topic. Ryan, um, is that so, the same list that was sent out uh, by Kate? Yeah, it is. Uh, there was, there were actually a few changes that um, there was one member that made some last minute changes and we didn't re send out the spreadsheet. It didn't, alter the rank, the ratings or the overall totals significantly. So we chose not to send out a uh, third copy of this. Mm. But yes, a few of them had moved from where we had landed last time. But it was like one, I think maybe one went from 19 to 18 and one went from 18 to 19 kind of thing. So it wasn't a significant move. And then, you know, do we want, do, do people want some time to talk about why they rank things the way they did? I mean, I we could spend, I mean, we could spend a little bit of time. I mean, we could get everyone just a few minutes to talk about how they thought about it and what their process was, if we'd like. Brian, yeah, I think a couple minutes are helpful. And I don't want to oversimplify it, but do we have to break those ties? Because when it goes to ProStack, okay. won't that change it all together anyway? Well, we can discuss that. That's, that's one thing. That's one option that I had in my mind. So, um, so do, you know, if you'd like me to go first on my discussion, I can, or if someone else would like to go first. Um, yeah, I'm happy to go first. So when I rank these, I mean, I think the most important things for me is to rank what were in my top three. And so for me, they were the continue the trail up the up the west side of McCaslin, which is number five. 
um, you know, this is the, whoop, this is the trail, you know, that kind of would come up the creek. I really struggled with that one because the hurdles to actually make that trail happen, maybe make it nearly impossible. But we said to rank it based on desire and not feasibility. And so by taking that direction, you know, it really, when I think about the trail, like when you get to town hall and you want to get out to the Mayhoff or single tree trail right now, you either have to loop around on McCaslin or in the future, you're going to have to cross a bridge and go up through the new um, Rogers farm development. So on sidewalks or on a road and you know, connecting that piece of trail, it would be an amazing piece of trail along the creek, but oh boy, the challenges are difficult there, right? There would have to be several property purchases or easements from property owners. There's great issues. So anyway, that was my pie in the sky um, ranking. My other one here was the, the connection from the US, gosh, you know what? This, this got sorted wrong, I think. Was that really my other one? I don't think that. I actually have to go look at this. Have you all, did you all look at this? Yeah, these are, something happened here. It got sorted and this is wrong. So let me go try to figure that out because <laughs> those weren't my top three. So Ryan, your top three would have been I have you for your top three, number nine, number 13, and number 22. Yeah. yeah, so one of them, I mean, for me, the other one that's always been important was down McCaslin from, you know, Indiana behind El Dorado down to, um, down to uh, the Colton Trailhead. You know, there's just no good access along McCaslin there, you know, so to get people to open space, I just think that's a critical trail. And again, that has feasibility issues because there's some ravines that it has to cross that are expensive. Um, and then the, uh, the final one I had was a downtown connector, which, um, wow, even in my final, yeah, oh. Yeah, gosh, this totally got messed up. I don't even know. I hope everyone, I think everyone's might be messed up in this and I apologize. I got to go figure out what happened. I'll probably have to pull up. Actually, let me just pull up the one that Kate sent. So it's not nine, 13 and 22 for you. Nine is connection from us 36 bikeway to. No, it's okay. not. So something happened. Hey this Ryan, do you want yeah. to take your screen off so you're not sharing your screen while you're hunting? Yeah, email sorry. For your yes, <laughs> I probably shouldn't. That's all my OSAC email, so that's all. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. So I, I have this spreadsheet open here, Ryan, and your top three um, was connection from US 36 bike to TC South of Cemetery, and you had connection from Coal Creek Drive to East Side of Track H, which is which number 13. 13. Oh, and so then no, you that's. Have I think uh, the 22. So maybe they are right. And maybe I just, I, I think I picked the wrong one that I thought was the right downtown connector that I wanted. The one I thought that was absolutely critical was the one connecting tract H down into, um, down into town. Um, That's let me, 10. Yeah. I think I might've just messed that up. So I, I mean, we can decide if we think we should allow people to uh, make changes here, but that was my intent was, yeah, it was, it was supposed to be 10 and not nine. Yeah, I, I have no problem with people making changes on the fly during this meeting, and that's why we're having the meeting. So if you want to, in, in my opinion, I think anyone should be able to change what they want to. Yeah, I would yeah. agree with that. We're, we're kind of here to learn. Uh, as a newbie, I'm kind of in listen mode, really kind of wrap my head around everybody else's points of view. The other thing, yep. Ryan, I don't know how much weight the spreadsheet carries, but it, you might have a second to take a look at it just to make sure that they check, sort of check the math and all that stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that is why we sent it out. So definitely take a look. Um, if you want to poke around in it while we're talking here, that's fine. Um, I did change mine because I just felt that was the most important connector in downtown. Now I 
pretty much know that that will happen because I've heard the developer talking about it, that once all those homes are done, they'll extend the sidewalk down and it's only a, what is it, a hundred yard, maybe not even a hundred yards, probably a hundred feet section from Tract H um, back down into downtown, right? It's this number 10 right here. So anyway, that, that's my feedback on how I picked the top three. So a question for you, there's something I was considering and, and kind of tooling around town on my bike, looking at some of these was, well, gosh, if it looked like there was construction there right now, the probability was that part of that construction would include some trail through there. And so I kind of put those lower just notionally because of that construction. But I'm hearing you say the kind of the opposite. Maybe I should rethink that. Well, I, I don't know, right? I've, I've gone back and forth on this each year. Well, yes, that's possible, but things could change, right? And so by us saying it's an important trail, I think helps us that if something does change or the developer drags their feet or anything that, you know, it, it helps remind everyone that we thought it was important. Thanks. For that. I think it's always safe that you should not make assumptions on development. Okay. The, other, the other thing I probably should have prefaced this with is that there is no money in the budget for trails this year. Um, there may be money next year, but usually that money came out of the open space fund, at least it had in the past. And so, you know, there may be a chance that there's no money next year as well, at least from the open space. The other thing I'll say is that because the town got Dr. Cog money to extend the 36 bikeway into our town, the town is also going to match um, funds for that this year and next year. So, you know, just, I, I can't say for sure, but, you know, I wouldn't say there's a super high probability that there's money for any of these, even this year or next year. But we do this in the off chance that some money becomes available or we get grants or other things that, that might happen. So, okay, so who would like to go next? I have uh, two comments. Um, yeah. First of all, I agree with Tracy that we shouldn't worry about the ties so much because prospect input may change that. Um, and second, my two, my top two were 15 and 17. I see that on the ranking that many agreed with the 15, but not so many with the 17. The reason I think is they somehow belong together, you know, along McCaslin, and that yeah. hikers or bikers can have a nice loop uh, in that area. Um, so I think come, those two together, if you look at the map, simply make sense to me. Okay, thank you. So I think I should perhaps go next because Rainier, I, I picked two of the same that you did. Uh, and, and Sean, uh, excuse me, Ryan, using your rationale uh, for number um, 15, I picked number 15, 17, and 22, I think. It's mainly because yep. there's just not a lot in those three places. Uh, and there's obvious connectors, there's obvious need in, in my mind. Um, lots of folks try and run through there and they're against the road and running through various things and whatnot. So um, anyway, I was with you, Renee. I thought that we needed some stuff in that area. I can go next. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what numbers mine were, Ryan. Here, I'll, 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 I'll uh, yours were five. Um, I was, I'm sorry, Tracy, yours were, yeah, five and then six and then uh, 12. Right. Or I 22. show 6, 22, and 11. Yeah, oh. I was one of those late people who came okay. mine. So I, so I initially, I spent way too many hours researching and thinking about this, to be honest, um, compared to all the past years. But I looked at my past rankings and then everything that we have new that's on the list. And initially, we've, we've talked so much about those connectors from downtown up to Rock Creek. That's really important. Um, but then I just kept hemming and hawing. And there's so many of them. And I, I mean, I could talk really for, for 20 minutes about um, what I think OSAC's view should be on it and trail connectivity and safety of children going back and forth to schools and all of that stuff. But in the end, um, I just left them all with the same ranking because they're all important. And I went with um, desire because that was supposed to be our, our goal anyway. And so I went to the two Shan Shan um, trails really that would connect up to Ormond Roche. 
And then the trail, I think that's number five. Yeah, that I want to get as much yep. access as we can to um, CenturyLink and along that whole um, corridor in order to be using these really valuable, awesome parcels and trailheads that we have. So that's where I landed. And I also took into a lot of consideration, you know, we've had citizens come and talk about um, their opposition to um, some of those trail connectors. And so that kind of puts us in a rock and a hard place. Like we look at what the best connections would be, um, but then we know that citizens are not happy with that. But I also don't think there's a perfect place to put any of those because I can't imagine any citizens are going to be happy with it. So um, I don't mean to to punt it to the board. Um, so I just kind of left left it all as, as high ranking, but not as my top ranking. And I went to where, where my true um, desires were, if that makes sense. So uh, other than five, what were your other two? Um, um, they were the five and six, the Shan Shan, and uh -huh. then I'm terrible with the numbers. Sorry. Six and 22. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. So six mm -hmm. here and then 22 is yep. over here. Yeah. And I do want to note, though, you know, we live in a small community and it's important that we do hear citizens' voices um, because we all, everyone knows everyone, right? Um, and so I don't want to discount that at all. And I think that, that we all should acknowledge that input. But then I look at what we did with the Ormond Rose Trailhead and our whole goal was to get not just one group of citizen voices, but a whole broad range of citizen voices. And in my opinion, that's what should be done with the trail connectors going forward is to get everyone who will be affected in that area, get their um, thoughts and opinions. That's just my two cents, but um, that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Who'd like to go next? I can all go. Right. I can okay. go quickly. Um, so I chose 10, 11, 12 as my top three choices. Oh, okay. I was really quick and easy. So my justification around that was really, you know, even though town center is not completed and won't be for a long time, it, to me, those trails have the, to me, I look at it as what, how many, um, which trails are going to have the highest um, movement on them, the highest um, usage. And so I think when, uh, downtown Superior is complete and I think about the access to that area to even um, get kids to Monarch High School and you know kids from where I live which is uh, I'm directionally challenged I have no I, I live in the summit townhome so wherever wherever north east southwest I have no idea but um, off of Colton like even I have access to get to downtown Superior without having to get on um, a major highway. So I kind of thought about it from that perspective. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pass, um, as you all know, 11 goes by my house and 80% of my neighborhood opposes it, including me. And um, I find it disturbing that um, you guys don't care what the neighborhood thinks. So I will pass. Okay. Joel? Um, can I comment on that, Marcy? I, uh, I felt like I just vocalized that we do care or I care what the neighborhood thinks. So um, just try not to generalize and know that we're all trying to do this um, with our volunteer time investment for open space and, and what affects the community as whole. But I, I understand your concern completely. Well, there, there are some members of the board that feel that um, we should not be putting new trails in established neighborhoods. So I'm hopeful that um, they will stay with that position. Okay, Joel and Sean, who would like to go next? You can go, Joel. <laughs> yep. um, so I've got number nine, number 12, and number eight. So um, nine and 12 really are connectivity um, from 36 bike path into downtown Superior, 12's connectivity from Greater Rock Creek into downtown Superior, and eight is parks one and two. I, I'm, I'm on the fence about eight. I, I kind of am rethinking that one as we sit here. Um, the one thing I, I did want to kind of comment on, um, while I, I tend to agree with 15 and 17 um, that a couple of you guys ranked high, I mean, I, I like the idea of those. 
the reason I did not rank 17s particularly higher is there is an exact crusher fine trail just on the other side of McCaslin. And with 15, there's, you know, Rock Creek neighborhood path. I, I ride those a lot. And so I guess for me, it was like, there's already something serviceable. It's not perfect, but it's serviceable. And so I looked for other trails that I thought filled a bigger gap. Um, but I, I do understand the one, the need for those. And um, yeah, I, I just was going to vocalize why I, why I voted those lower than some of the rest. Like I said, to me, uh, it's connectivity to, to downtown. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in support for connectivity to downtown. Um, I don't have to rehash my position on this. We all know where it is. Okay. Thank you, Joel. Appreciate it. Sean? Maybe some of the new people don't know your, your passion on it, Joel. <laughs> Well, I mean, my position really is that we should explore all avenues for um, connectivity between Greater Rock Creek and downtown Superior um, to provide as safe and easy travel for families, walkers, joggers, hikers, bikers. Um, you know, I think we've all seen uh, there's a tremendous amount of people out right now, and it's great to have connectivity between all areas of Superior. That's my stance. Okay, thank you, Joel. Sean, bring us yep. home. I, all right, so originally I had picked five, six, and 15. Over the years, I've always taken the stance of developing trails west and then move east. So I was gonna follow that same uh, logic. Uh, but the more I thought about it, I was like, and then walking also over on that Anderson property um, and seeing how that was being developed and the trail already being set up over there to connect with downtown. I actually switched 15, which seemed, yeah, ideally it'd be great, but a whole lot of things would have to fall in place in order for number five uh, to happen, including the purchase of track 919, getting easements across different people's properties. Um, and, you know, we do have a lot of um, connectivity down there already. Um, so I actually switched my number five to number 13. Um, again, you know, I live kind of in, in that area and just walking with my family, it's nice to have, you know, loops, you know, I love loops, uh, who doesn't love a loop, um, to get down, down to downtown. Um, and so instead of 12, I looked at 12 and I said, well, that'd be, I, I, with a lot, like a lot of people, I was like, oh, that'd be great. But since it abuts a, an existing neighborhood, and again, I think that whenever you have a trail that goes against an established neighborhood, you're going to get pushback. Um, granted, it's not like number 11 where you're going to get it tremendously on both sides, pros and cons. You know, number 12, you'd only get on one side. But, you know, if, if we were able to put a, a, a connector at um, whatever that cul-de-sac is, that'd be great yeah, for those. Pick in. Yeah, yeah pick in. thank you. Um, but because 13 is already there, it's already set up, uh, you know, and you can easily get from uh, Car Carval and Pitkin, you know, just going down the road a little bit and then going east over to 13. I figured, you know, I, I think I'll probably go with, with number 13 instead of 12. Um, and, and like Joel said, I didn't pick number 17 or number 22 just because uh, my logic is always been kind of on the northwest side of town and working way kind of working my way south so that's my logic so sean just to be sure i did have to change one i don't think i had the so 15 11 so it was uh six which is the connector across the creek uh 13 was the connector from yep. anderson to downtown yep. and then 15 which goes up to the ridge okay i got it Cool. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you for everyone for giving us your insight as to why you picked it. So now we need to figure out how to fill in the ranking column. Um, several options that I see. I mean, the goal is to try to get this ranking done today. If we feel like we're not going to, then we can, you know, spend another meeting on. I'd rather not. Um, a couple ways I see of doing this would be the, to use the total, you know, this total in the top three as a way to break ties. 
So like between um, one and 15, one has three votes in the top three and the other has zero. So that could break that tie. You know, down here in the 19s, we have two with two, one with one, and then one with zero. So it helps, but it doesn't completely break the tie. Um, we could, well, other ideas. Ryan, so I thought we were not going to include county. Do we want to rank county separately from the town so that they'd be two different ranking systems or are we including them all in one ranking? Because my you know, recollection is we're putting them all in one ranking, but okay. then when money because like they're not we, in our top three though we didn't include them in our top three for that reason. So I don't know why we would I don't know why we would want to keep them all in one list because just total, to be consistent with what we agreed with ProStack on what we were going to do. So okay. Ryan, just a, a thought on that, um, building a little bit on Sean's point. I I'm not uh, looking to change it, but but it is odd that the one that's the number one on the map, nobody has it in their top three. It shouldn't be in our top three. <laughs> well, but we did said you couldn't right. put a county as your top three. Those were in well, the I know directions. That's what I'm saying. So I don't think if we can't, if, if individuals weren't allowed to do that, then why would we as a group do that, I guess? Is well, but I mean, just remember, if the town comes up with money, we would look down the town list ranking and say, okay, here's our top one, then our next one, then our next one. Yeah. And then same when we submit things to the town of Boulder or the county of Boulder, we look at the county ones and say, okay, these are the, the ones. I, I, my concern is if we start changing the rules, this is going to cause uh, some spin that we're going to have to fix with ProStack because no we worries. agreed we were going to rank the, them all together. Yeah. Like I think this. I misunderstood the, the rule. I just assumed that since we weren't picking those as our top three, that they wouldn't be in our you know, top three when we were done. But I made, well, I, made, I, made, I, made a, I made a jump that you might not have made. Not no, and that, and that it's a weird thing that it happened. Um, and we could, I mean, we could choose to move that down just because of that. I, I mean, I'm fine with that. If we say, look, you know, that one actually gets a lower ranking because we don't want, we said we didn't want a county in the top three. I think we should leave it as is. Because it does show our our desire and and yeah if we got dr cog money or some other community could collaborate with us i mean it shows our priority of where our trails are at the the other comment about you know we could just leave our totals and see what ProStack comes up with when they vote and then that will uh, further refine this in the past we have submitted what the overall OSAC ranking was, what the overall ProStack ranking was, and then what the combined ranking was. So there is some history for not doing that, that actually we come up with our one through 25 that we then compare with ProStack's one through 25, but we don't have to. So um, by the way, you do need to still resort your totals because um, if you're sorting by total sum and then sorting secondarily by your top three count um, number trail number four should actually drop to the bottom of the 19s because yeah I, I've only sorted so. by F I haven't sorted by G also G. yeah you should probably do that well do both at the same time there you go better I like the idea of weighting what ProSex ranking is because, I mean, even if you have you know, one number different, 19 to 18 or 19 to 20, it's kind of pretty close um, as, um, as a collective idea of what we want to do. And uh, I think it's like splitting hairs if you try to figure out which of the 19s is a better and a worse number. I agree with that, but Ryan, what, what was the plan with ProStack? What was the plan that you were going to come back with your rankings? You were going well, to come back with polls? we didn't. I, it, that part is vague, right? I'm just, historically, we've all, we've always had ProStack had their one through X and OSAC had their one through X. I mean, the one, the only other problem I might see with that, Rainer, is that we still might end up with five things at 19. And then we would have to have another joint meeting with ProStack where if we can actually get it down to one to 25, when we combine it with ProStack, historically, we haven't had many conflicts. 
So that's just so, an, another perspective. Right, so we can do the ranking, so you'll have it as backup if you aren't using the totals. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, last time it all kind of, it kind of all worked out, right? There wasn't any one way that we looked at this that said, wow, something was really off. And if something was, this is where we would get together as a leadership group and figure out, you know, how we should agree on the final ranking. So I think, I think we could propose to ProStack that we, you know, could just look at the totals, but I would feel more comfortable if we had our ranking also going into the discussion with them. So, you know, do you, what do you, how do you, I mean, you know, how many are at, tied? How many are tied? We got we go. one, two, so two sets of two, Two, three sets of two, four sets of two, five sets of two, right? So 10. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I feel like we're splitting hairs here. Um, if I think if money becomes available, everyone's going to take a much deeper look at the list and we're going to want to re reassess. So I guess for now, only the, the top five or six matter because there's no budget anyway. We're going all the, down the list, so we shouldn't have to worry about the ones lower on the list. Um, they're not going to happen in the next years. And I so mean, if you want to worry about the ties, then maybe just among, among the top five or six. I mean, I'm just looking at like the number that have like twos and threes to see if there was something that differentiated it and it doesn't <laughs> for this first one we're looking at that's tied on these fours. I mean, we can just say we sorted them and fill in the numbers. It's not scientific, um, but they're tied and we'd need to break a tie somehow. We could flip a coin, we could, um, I don't know, I'm open to suggestions. I say you just sort on total sum, then by total count, then by trail number. Largest to smallest, largest to smallest, and smallest to largest. And be done. I, think, I think if we need to do the rankings that we should discuss them. How about we look into potential costs? It's, it's the exercise. Yeah, I mean, I think if, if we're going to want to discuss them, we're either going to need to push agenda items or have another meeting on this as we're already over a lot of time and people need to drop off at 730. So if we want to have more discussion to break the tie, then we'll need to push it to the next meeting. Then I would vote to just leave them with the ties, but I'm open to other people's ideas. Oh, well, we could do that, right? That's the other way to do it. I think right? you should you, leave it to reflect the group's will and the group's will was they were tied. Yeah, I, I'm actually thinking that that makes sense. I mean, you, your argument is, you know, if money becomes available, then we might need to look back at this and look at the prioritization. I think that's when you have those discussions. That's when the question of budget and feasibility and all these other factors come into play and thinking through a recommendation we might make to the board of trustees. Having the those thing it, well, to me is sort of, is sort of here's the thing. It won't always work that way. The board will say we have money. ProStack and OSEC have ranked. Let's pick. Right, that's the purpose. It's not for us to go back and then make a recommendation on, right? It's so that they have it ready to go, but. That's true. I, hear I mean, what you're saying. Um, but I also think that right now you're talking about making rankings in the abstract. If we're going to want to make and separate ties, then I would want to get into the details that I just described. And I don't think that's right. really where this group wants to go. Yeah, we still have to go through ProStack, right, and come up with the common ranking with them. So I don't think at this point it matters. I think we just leave it as is, as ties. So 19 would be tied for whatever, fourth place, right? Yeah. Two for fourth. And then that's and then we look at ProStack and see how they did it, and then we have to hash it out between the two committees, and yeah. then that's where we get the final ranking. So that's really where it matters is what we present to the board, and that's not going to happen until two more steps down the road. I think that that's the cleanest and it's the most scientific based on how we ranked. Do we um, need to bump though the one county uh, trail one? Do we need to bump it down?
because we agreed that we weren't going to um, rank a county trail in our top three. No, I don't think so. I think we leave it as is. You know, again, from my engineering scientific standpoint, this is the data. Let's stick with the way the data is set up and not move things kind of on gut feel or whatever. I, I, I just think we need to stick with a logical path and, and stick with it. That's what we decided. It doesn't a, how it falls out. That's how it falls yeah. out. A, a point of order on, on that one for next year. Um, as a newbie, um, I assumed that the green ones had lower value. Uh, based on the instructions I was given. So I didn't really consider them in any way as a top one. I think I ranked one of them in my top group, but that for me even was a stretch. I just assumed that that wasn't part of it. I may have misunderstood. No, no, Frank, you're right. It is a mixed message. I mean, because we're still ranking these trails as really important. And yet, you know, when it comes to our top three, we're told not to include them. Well, it should, they should have been included. So it's either all or not. But our right. justification behind that was we don't we have a hundred percent control over or the town has a hundred percent control over the superior ones the town trails we right. have very little say in the county trails and so we chose ourselves and ProStack to say that if it's a county trail we just don't feel like it's something that should be in our top three because we have so little influence over it but we said we shouldn't rank it in our top three. We didn't say it could end up in the ranking in the top three. <laughs> That's it's, a, it's, it's a it's it's a it's a double I mean, it's standard. A, it's, it's a, a double standard. It's still a double standard. Well, you got You have to have just, the same standard across the board all the time. Again, if we're gonna have them separated, then separate them. Have it a separate, you know, tab. If you want to have them all together, then you have to allow top three of the county as well. I mean, that's uh, you can't have the double standard. I just have a quick question. Um, if, if you were ranking just the county trails, would they end up in the ranking that they look like they are with Davidson Mesa, 76th Street, uh, Safety of Colton, et cetera, in that order? For me, it would. Yes. I don't know. I didn't consider it because I removed them from my top three. No, but just the overall, well, yeah. I mean, it, Sean, your point's taken, right? We'll consider this for next year when we go into the ranking process. I mean, it's a, it's a good note to take that when we go in and say this was somewhat of a, you know, it's an interesting result that we said we didn't want to rank a county in the top three, yet a county trail ended up in the top three. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think there's no problem. I mean, I, I think it's just, just a, it's a sticky point, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, I think we share our list with ProStack and be real curious to see what they come up with. Um, I'm kind of interested. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where their bias is, you know, compared to our bias. So, okay. I need to fill this in, but once I fill it in on the total rank, I, my eyes just aren't seeing it right right now. So I'm going to check it and double check it, and then we'll send it back out to the group uh, when we're done. So everyone can have the, the copy. Hey, Ryan, the, the one question I would have is the, the raw data itself. Um, I know you took individual spreadsheets in and then you sorted it. That, that's the level I was worrying about sort of the quality control is once you, if you make a sort mistake, just when you're importing people's original data, that's, you'll never catch it. Um, well, that was the intent of sending it out before the meeting was for everyone to double check. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, so if, you, if, I mean, just go ahead and check. And if you find an error, um, well, you know, can you send back out the latest? Because I think you've collected yeah, that's, new data. That's, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to rank this and I'm going to send it out. And then, you know, if there's an error, we'll have to see if it changes anything. Um, I, at this point, though, I ask that we don't say, oh, boy, I've seen the, you know, I've re-looked at it and I changed my mind, right? That we just can't have that after we all agree on the approach and what we think the ranking is going to be. So um, please just look for mistakes. I just want that to be clear that there's no uh, ambiguity on what you should do when you get the spreadsheet. But we do want to make sure there aren't any mistakes because so I Ryan, obviously made one. So yeah, just make sure before you send it out that all the blank fields don't have spaces in them because those actually get counted as a total count. So you yeah, actually, I know. One. Yeah, so just go through and make sure the blanks are actually blank. Yeah, I thought I went and counted them all. Uh, if they were in the top three and actually verified each one of those, but I'll check it. I'll, I'll, we do need to do a good sanity check. Yes, that count if, you know, or you count A. Other, you can use another formulation where you're using specific language. 
Yeah, I know. Okay. But um, thanks for all your work on this, Ryan. I know it's oh, been a yeah. real uh, beast. That's true. No, this one I enjoy. This one's awesome. I, I like the debate. I like the discussion. I like, you know, having all the various points of view on, on how we should get getting people around town. So appreciate yeah, everyone getting me the data. Ryan, one, one interesting point to me too, or that we didn't talk about the bottom of the list. There was a lot of uh, similar votes around the bottom of the list. Uh, and so I wonder in future years, do those sort of drop off and get replaced by others or do they just live on and get voted on again next year? So they really pretty much live. I mean, this is the complete list now. Okay. We, we talked about having things on here and then only having a top 10, but we said, or a top 20, but there were four more. <laughs> so really this is the list and they do just live on, right? I, I mean, I can actually see Coyote Ridge and the Coyote Connection from Pirate Park maybe getting more traction next year now that we own CenturyLink. I mean, you I know, guess, yeah. So I guess would the, would the long-term vision, you know, sort of the 50 year vision be to have all of these? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, the reason I say that is Boulder County on some of them have basically just said no, right? We're not, we're not considering, we, we don't want more connectors into the Boulder County open space. And some of these are more connectors into the open space. Point taken. So not from, yeah. it's, but I think it's worth, you know, it's worth keeping the history and that's in the continuities doc, right? You can go see all the commentary and how it's been voted year over year. So. Well, I guess the reason I'm asking that question is, is strategically, if, if the goal, for example, just removing the green ones was to try and get all of the yellow ones, plus or minus a couple, uh, noting some of the comments that were discussed in the next 50 years, then one might take a different strategy than ranking every year. One might look for opportunities to check each box when that box becomes most effectively checked can i can i actually can we tag uh table this because sure. we're, we're 15 minutes over and i think allison if i remember correctly we have a hard i think she cuts us off at 7 30 i think it all I, I'm, I'm fine with that <laughs> I'm fine with and that. i think i think later in the year is a good time for us actually to have that conversation yeah. when when we actually have a little more time to do that so i'm yeah. great with that especially if we can return to it at some point down okay. Thank you. But I do, one of the things that we have on our agenda or our work plan is to work up any new trail recommendations we have to put on the joint list for next year. So we will have another discussion about this later on in the year. Okay. So with that, I would like to wrap it up and uh, get into talking about budget recommendations for 2020. This is in our Q2 work plan. Um, and so, I, you know, I guess it's specifically, do we want to ask for things on Orman Roche? And are there other asks that we would have um, that we need to start preparing for, you know, the town budget process? So in my opinion, you know, I will always ask if we can add some things to the, to that trailhead, the low hanging fruit stuff. You know, we have some good things that are, going to be coming in art and whatnot, um, you know, and I think we should, again, I don't know if it's coming out of the general fund um, and then we have to work with ProStack in order for that to happen uh, because they made that one of their uh, items on their uh, list of, what is, Allison, what's their list called? The the parks and rec list that they, that they use to rank. Amenities yeah. prioritization. Okay. So ProSAC has their list, and I believe this actually was number 37 or something on their list. So, um, you know, I, yes, I think we should, particularly if they're including it on their list, then we should ask for something. My counter argument to that is we've said that we need the post master plan to drive what we think the most important amenities are. And then going and asking for specific things to me is bypassing that process. Well, if it's on their list, why are they doing a ranking then? You know, the Pro Master Plan just got approved for the update in the in the board on Monday, so that that process hasn't even started yet. And the amenities prioritization is just something they do every year, kind of like you know the trail ranking and that everybody Our, does. Are still ranking for us? Did we say that we needed the Pro Master Plan to determine what we wanted on Ormond Road? That's what I recall we were going to do. We were going to promote it let the usage drive it and then 
because we were said we were not promoting it, we weren't comfortable with it coming out of open space fund, then it essentially had to come out of the post master plan, the, that planning process. Well, the other option was pros, the threefold pros, um, all different committees and kind of piecemeal it together, or we go back at this next budget year and ask again from open space. Well, but we said we didn't want open space money for this. We said it should be, no, I you're mean, saying to change our stance on that. No, that's not what I'm saying. The presentation that I did where it was, we were asking for it to come out of general fund and, you know, essentially it got Oh, right, right, right. Yes. I, okay. So we could continue with our stance that it comes out of general fund or a similar presentation with a similar data saying, hey, now we just acquired this awesome parcel of land and that was our big concern. And so now we feel comfortable with it coming out of the open spot. Space fund. I'm not saying that's what we should do. I'm just there's yeah. several options that we have. I think. What does everyone else think? So, uh, just a clarification question: Are we talking about money from the 2020 budget, and we are in the middle of 2020 already? No, this would be a, a recommendation for in the 2021 budgeting process. Oh, 21. Okay. So. Yep. Yep. That's a mistake on the agenda. It should be budget recommendations for 2021. I apologize. Okay. That just slipped through. Can someone clarify what we did get from this budget for the um, trail? For nothing. What I mean, I shouldn't say nothing. What what was settled that day um, was minor things like trash cans, um, jump in at any time, Allison. It was the bare necessities, um, minor signage, uh, et cetera. No, none of the amenities that we had had on our list and proposed um, to come out of it. The parking we, lot, the fencing. Um, well, none of that was on our amenities list, though. So, right. I mean, that was all going to be there regardless from what they took out of the open sp space fund from the get go. But none of the amenities that we desired. Um, Correct. Got approved. Because, Tracy, we had the low budget, we had the median budget, and we had the high budget. So, we didn't even get the low budget. Correct. Okay. And I remember the discussion. We got the from no the budget. Board. <laughs> yeah. Didn't the, I think the board said, you know, we just built this thing. Let's see yeah. how it goes and let's let it sit for a year and see, you know, what we think in another year. And so, yeah, I, I mean. Right. I mean, I'm a little torn and I'm happy to do whatever. Um, I'm happy that things are kind of starting to get a little piecemealed, uh, even if it's just from CAPS and Historical Commission. I'm really excited about that because those things were on our um, amenities list. We can always pitch it again and I'll still be on the committee and anyone else can come pitch it again. Um, what, whatever we come up with as a consensus, I'm, I'm supportive of. Allison, when this is usually like September, October. So we have some time. I mean, Tracy, is that when you presented last time? Yeah, but I think, wasn't it Allison, it's supposed to be in like August and then it got pushed to September for some yeah. reason, am I right? And you know, I mean, I do feel that this is a good time to begin these discussions because we only have one meeting a month. June, we're starting to formulate stuff. We're even starting to begin meeting, having meetings in June about budget. And so it is nice to, you know, have something formulated as early as the group can. Um, just because, you know, getting in early is easier. Frank, do you, are you raising yeah, your hand? Okay. I, think I am sorry. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm trying to un understand. I'm a little confused, I'll admit. Um, so the, the um, committee, us, we have sort of a standing statement of we prioritize the purchase of land over all things. And so I'm, I'm struggling with that statement given asking for any amenities. Are there other purchases that would be on the table after uh, CenturyLink, which I'm looking out my window right now, by the way? Um, and, and if so, then maybe we should be talking to, I guess the, the thing I'm struggling with is the Ormond Roche amenities discussion. Is that happening in a vacuum or is that happening against other considerations we should be on the table as well? Well, and I, that, I, mean, of I actually see, I, I see, Roche, right? no, it, 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 
it's a really good question, right? Because last time we said it needed, we wanted it to come from general fund. Okay, so that would change the, the source of the funding. I well, guess. and and there's no saying that they're in August, if we say it should come from the open space fund, mm -hmm. there's a chance we won't even know the future of the open space fund in August, right? Mm -hmm. We won't know if everything will be done with CenturyLink and, you know, so we very well could ask for something where there's no money. So I think that's risky. So I actually think we should take a two prong approach. I think we should be prepared to go back and say, look, you all said no, but let's let it sit for a year. And, you know, like I said, we want to keep driving adoption so that there's more people saying how great that trail hit is, but if only, you know, if only it had some shade or if only it had some running water, or I just think that other people speaking will be our friend and then also make sure that we're proactive and lobby as hard as we can with the post master planner that there are some you know amenities that could be put into the town and we have a good space for it and see if we can't also drive it through that process well we spent a lot of time on it last year discussing our wish list you know in the categories and and why don't we just re revisit the wish list and um go back and, and ask for them. Well, I guess that's another issue, whether we go back for the general fund money. But I mean, we did put a lot of time into that wish list and mm -hmm. maybe we should just review it and revisit it. Yeah, I, I agree with everything just said. And on the note that you said lobby for the first master planner, is there a way, Allison, that we would be able to communicate with that? I mean, how, how would that occur? Say that again to communicate with what? Ryan had a note of lobbying for the with the Prost Master Planner about um, open spaces, desires, for amenities on Ormond Roche. How would so, we convey that? Yeah. So <laughs> our our group is going to be um, you know involved in the master plan and. Um, you know, I don't know what that's exactly going to look like yet, but, um, you know, being able to voice concerns or ideas and especially like these types of, um, you know, documentation of the work you've already, the group has already done. I mean, really everything, as much data as possible is what is going to be given to the uh, consultant. So, you know, if there are things that, you know, documentation that you want to give them, I mean, I would say we start collecting it now to give it to them. And okay. then, um, you know, that would, if they enter in with as much data as possible from all the parties and, you know, stakeholders, the better outcome <clears throat> it will be. Okay. So, and Tracy, I, I think, I don't know if we need to change anything. I mean, I, nothing, I mean, I know, I mean, maybe we have to do a few updates because I think the historic commission has some signage that's getting ready to go up there that yeah. talks about, you know, the history of the trailhead, but that doesn't mean that all the historic signage that we envision is done, right? Mm -hmm. If they talk about uh, Miss Orman and Miss Roche, but also the, you know, the coal, va the valley and the, the old historical town Right, there might be more historical pieces that we think so. Okay, so I'll just review all of that. The spreadsheet, well, Sean can review the spreadsheet, that's his baby, and I'll review my presentation and we can get that to you and Kate, and you guys can forward it on to Allison. Does that work? Yeah, do we, does a group feel like we need to do a group review of that at the next meeting, or are we comfortable with what we did last time? I mean, Rainer. At least I would like to see it. I don't think yeah. we're about it, but I would Actually, be good to read it. On, no, on top of what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember reading this when I was coming on board, but I think uh, a short okay. discussion might be good. Okay. For some of us, we're good with what we did, but I understand why they want to see it. Yeah, so let's, let's just put that on the agenda for next time to go over it one more time. Um, and then, okay, so I think we have a good plan for Orman Roche for the budget. Is there anything else we want to consider asking for in the budget? 
I'm a little nervous asking since we just spent $15 million, but <laughs> that, that was a different fund, right? So if people are more aggressive. We should double down and buy Zacharias. Yeah. The Harrius, yes. We the Harrius. The Harrius. <laughs> sure, that hey, one just, too. Let's buy both of those. But just a reminder that, you know, when I things wish. are under, you know, since I've been on the board that there's been a development proposal on that land. And yeah. so we've not even been able, had the ability to make a recommendation. We actually did make a recommendation and we were very sternly reminded that we should not be doing such things when there's active development proposals. So we haven't had an opportunity to even do that in over three years. That's okay. So. You can always push back against bureaucracy. Um, <laughs> we're volunteers. Um, are you going to talk about Zacharias in a second? Yep. Though? Yep. Okay. The Harrius. So, the Harrius. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just wrap. Are there any other asks? And if there's not, we can we can move on to Zaharius. I mean, if if you think that's, of, yeah, go ahead, Rainer. Just a general comment, um, not a specific. When it comes to money, it's always good to ask. And uh, you know, it's okay if, if someone says no, but it's never bad to ask for something. Good point. Um, so just summarizing, I'm gonna somebody is gonna plan to pitch that again. That's the tentative plan in the fall <clears throat> regarding the amenities for Foreman Roche. And then we're going to review all the other um, amenities and the presentation at our next meeting. And that will go to Allison, which will go to the pro semester planner. Correct? Correct. Okay, cool. The only, I mean, it's not really on the agenda, but because I think other input to the planner probably is our open space ranking. At least it was in the original. Pro, I, I'm pretty sure that's in the pros master plan that's there now was the original property ranking. Um, I mean, do we want to try to get that done sooner, like start ramping that up next meeting so that we have an, an updated ranking going into the pros master plan? It'd be a shame if we got that done in October or November when that process was wrapping up. But Zaharias is number one on our last ranking anyway. Yep. But CenturyLink comes off and actually it might only be CenturyLink that comes off. Well, the Ridge comes off too, doesn't it? Ridge. Yeah. And I got some updates this week from Matt and Martin um, and I'm almost finished with that document, but that might be something we can review at the next meeting too um, on some changes with. Martin. Okay. But I mean, I think, I think it's probably worthwhile to start. So I think at the next meeting, let's start talking about the property ranking process now that we're wrapping up with the trail ranking process. I mean, luckily, well, I shouldn't say luckily, there's way fewer to rank, which maybe makes it easier or harder. I don't know. <laughs> so, and the, the big ones off the list. So it, I think it'll be an, a more interesting ranking process. So, okay. Let's, I know people have to go, so I really want to talk about Zaharias. So if everyone's okay, can we switch gears to Zaharias? Okay, so the reason this came up is there was some public comment and some committee comment about the prairie dog situation that was happening on Zaharias. And you know what I was really curious about is there were some people saying that we need to maybe even have an emergency meeting to make recommendations to the board. Um, and I just, this one is really hard for me because what the board had said is, you know, when they need inputs from us, they will request it for us, right? We don't review all properties. They say, we want OSAC's input on park. And so OSAC, please come back with your recommendation. Having said that, I know there's some interest in talking about, you know, the prairie dogs and whatnot on Zaharia. So I think it's fine, you know, that we could have that discussion now. I think Kathy's off. Is she still on? Because she drafted the regulations for the town of Superior on prairie dogs, where she helped draft them. So she, I went to her when I was gathering my facts on what actually happened, because I knew she was the most knowledgeable one in the in, around here. Um, but it's the way the regs are written. It's it's basically they try to trap them and move them. But unfortunately, they haven't found a place that will take prairie dogs anymore. And um, 
And when they can't find a place to trap and move them, the alternatives are to trap them and feed them to the raptors or other animals, or to gas them with carbon monoxide. And that's what happened in town 15 for all of you. Um, they basically gassed them. Um, they killed all the prairie dogs back here. Um, so that seems to be the humane way that the town and the county feels prairie dogs should be handled. And we do have town people that do watch that. My concern with the Harriers was that that wasn't happening because of the citizens who were both speaking out. So I'm happy to hear. Well, I can clarify that actually, yeah. Tracy. Yeah. Um, the person that spoke out was Kelly and I've communicated with Kelly and she was out, she did speak at the um, uh, town meeting, not the last one, but the one before that. And she was talking about the putting equipment on the holes where the prairie dogs live and thereby killing them. And um, the mayor said that he would look at it, but when I contacted Clint, he said, if you look at later in the meeting, it turns out that what Kelly saw wasn't the hairiest. She was actually looking at the um, 80th Street construction, which Kathy just talked about, that they did follow the rules. Um, so Kelly, was talking about that. So uh, okay. evident, evidently they did follow the rules. As you know, as, as an animal lover, I don't quite like the rules, but those are the rules. I mean, and Marcy, I think- Kelly you was know, talking about was, was the 80 street construction. I mean, I think from our committee's point of view that if we believe we don't like, and I think this is written into town code, so if we wanted to change this, it would require change to the town code that right. as an open space committee, if we wanted to recommend other things or some other course to the board, that's perfectly within our work plan per right. the, you know, wildlife encouragement. Right. Um, you know, I think that if you wanted to champion that to do some research and come up with some ideas that it would be a, a reasonable thing to do within this group. I would love to do that, Ryan. The problem is the, the first choice would be to trap them and resettle them. But um, I've talked to some wildlife groups and I am a member of some wildlife groups. And the problem seems to be there's no place to move them. Um, so has anyone reached out to Boulder County to see if there's no place? Because I remember Peter and I actually went on a uh, tour with Boulder County for yeah. the open space around Superior, and they actually did have places that they um, were prepping for prairie dog uh, transferral, uh, actually over by um, uh, uh, the reservoir, Marshall Reservoir area. Um, and so I, I guess the first place, you know, if, if they aren't being involved, I mean, we, we should be reaching out to Boulder County first and foremost. And Allison, I, I'm assuming that happens already. Um, but you know, so I, I can offer another data point at COSA last year, I did sit in on a talk from Boulder County about prairie dogs and they had a bunch of data and I forget the exact metrics that they had, but they had the number of prairie dogs and then some other like grass metric that they tracked. And what they found is they were relocating so many that it was actually damaging the grasslands in those areas where they were, where they were being transferred to. It actually was having a negative impact on the overall environment. And so they said at that point, the way that the ratios had that Boulder County is not relocating a single prairie dog anymore because of these metrics. Yeah, I heard uh, that um, on the south side um, where we live of Boulder County, uh, that actually prairie dog population is only like 32% of capacity. Um, so that there's plenty of room down here to relocate. Um, again, that's a Boulder County question. Uh, and again, I'm assuming, you know, Allison can correct me that that's the first thing the town would do or the appropriate parties would do would to reach out to Boulder County see where uh, what the status is of relocation and 
uh, if that's an option. You know, I don't know what the cost of, I, it's, it's got to be high. It's not easy to catch prairie dogs and move them, um, but. I mean, yeah, I can follow up farther on this, um, if you guys want, with Boulder County. I would, and I do think like every year, possibly this, uh, data could change just because of, you know, when prairie co colonies die or, um, you know, just different land management practices and things like that. So I think it is something, you know, kind of like, well, if it doesn't work this year, maybe it's something to even keep our eye on because that doesn't necessarily mean they'll be totally at capacity another year. Right. And as we saw on the Colton trailhead, that, that was a massive die off in this past as many of us noticed. Yeah, historically the south side of Boulder County has had a very low population, we were told, so it's never been an issue. What I'll do is I'll see if I can find that presentation from COSA. I mean, this was, you know, six or eight months ago, so it's very possible that I misremembered, you know, that it was all of Boulder County. So um, I think that I'd be willing to go dig and see if I can find that. That might be, it might even just give you, Marcy, a contact from the right. person that published that paper. Um, right. So it could, could be something. So I'll take that action item. And I'll take no. the action item, Marcy, of also finding the contacts of the people who led the tour uh, whenever it was that Peter and I went. I think it was last year. Um, okay. And then have those folks too. And, and I'm happy to, you know, follow up with both of those and um, find out Boulder's position and whether they've been involved in what Superior has been doing um, and report back next time. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on Zahari the general topic of Zaharias activity? Hey, people bringing that up and us taking the time to address that. Sure. Um, I mean, there is some Zaharias activity at Park at Rock Creek, but that's in the updates and look ahead. So if there's nothing else, I think we can move on to the look ahead. And I just have one quick question about- Oh yeah, sure. So there's obviously there's, this all came up due to social media and on the, um, whatever the, the news, not the newsletter, but the- Is it the listserv or- The, the listserv or whatever. And that's where I saw it all to begin with. You know, I. I sit silently because on, I choose not to reply because I don't always feel like I have 100% of the information that needs to be provided. Is that something that we should be directing residents to a certain person or a certain department or, you know, any recommendations on that? Oh, man, that's such a good question. Like the Just general question answer. is how should, how should OSAC members respond to social media in general i mean is is kind of the general question if i hear it right kate I, and we don't have to talk i mean that's a huge question right and it comes up all the time and so i i'm happy to table that for another meeting but i do think i think it could be a potential missed opportunity for us to get information out to residents so and and i have a quick thing i i just pulled up an article um you know, one of the contacts for Boulder County Open Space and Mountain Parks, it looks like um, they're saying they can relate, relocate 40 acres of prairie dogs per year, but unfortunately there are 967 acres of land is what they were saying. So there is some, some question as to um, this past year of overpopulation of prairie okay. dogs in some of their areas, but anyway. I knew I had seen something. I just wanted to okay. share it. <laughs> I mean, Never hurts to ask, though. And on so, social media, I think that's a great thing that we should address that enough. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's totally I think, that's fine. It's huge. Well, and I actually, you know, I almost would like, yeah, I think that this might be something that we should get to Karen to put in her committee training, mm -hmm. right? How, how should town volunteers, and maybe it's already there, and I'm cringing a little bit because I should be remembering. No. But it's this not is... There. I mean, on one hand, you know, I really struggle with this because, you know, we know, because we're involved, we know more, more than other people do. But I also see how people get crucified on social media mm -hmm. and it's brutal and it's not always rational. And, you know, is it, 
I don't know if I'm always willing to stick my neck out to get That's personally right. crucified when it's not always, you know, a rational conversation. So, you know, maybe I need to try, maybe I need to be more vocal and just put things out there. I mean, I do see when people say as a member of the committee, this is what is going on. A lot of people get back and say, oh, wow, yeah, that, that's really valuable. Thanks for the input. I don't see people getting crucified. Um, anyway, I, I just think that we should have a, a, a long, a more in-depth discussion on this or see if actually, you know, the committee training could be updated to see if the town actually has any guidance mm -hmm. on, on what they think we should be doing on this. So I'll, I'll take that as an action to see if there isn't some guidance, but we should follow back up on this at the next meeting. Okay. Because it's, it's a good one. So thanks, Kate. Yep. Okay. Updates and look ahead. So the park at Rock Creek. So we did some good work. Um, I don't remember if it was the last meeting or the meeting before getting ready for the planning commission. What happened was that Allison said the planning commission is getting everything together. So I took our notes from the last meeting. I included the extra information that Tracy had emailed in about uh, what we thought was conflict. You know, Tracy, what you had said was in their report, they said that, you know, wildlife is declining. And we said, well, we politely disagree. Wildlife is, is on the uptick from the reports we're seeing. Reformatted it. So they have the information. The meeting, I believe, is on the 8th, so next Monday. I plan to be there and to reiterate the points and answer any questions that the Planning Commission might have about our recommendation uh, you know, on that trail and protecting the HHR. Um, standing update, or I guess any questions or comments on that? It'll be nice to finally get those comments out. <laughs> The Planning Commission meeting is on the 8th, you said? 18th, uh, 18th next Monday. 18th. Thank you. Yep. Thank, thanks for going, Ryan, and representing us. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, standing update. So, Orman Roche, we talked a little bit about budget, but um, the only thing I'd like to comment is I just see more and more cars there every time I drive down McCaslin. It's not that often anymore, but the other thing I pay close attention to when I drive down is how many cars are there versus down in original town. And I see maybe, I, it's weird. It doesn't really matter how many I see up above. There's usually one or two below, but the amount of cars stacked up down below is definitely a lot less. So it really feels like that leaving that congestion has worked. And I, I just think people are realizing what a gem that trailhead is. It's just such a cool spot. So I'll I leave it at that. I wanted to add on to that because for me to go anywhere, I have to go past it on McCaslin, basically. And the cars are increasing in numbers every day. Last time there were at least 15 or 16 up at the top. And I think the sign made a really big difference. I think, you know, that big sign, people finally noticed it's there. And maybe, you know, with us having to stay home, it's creating more interest. And a lot of people go there for the sunsets. That's when you see the most cars. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the only other thing I'll throw out is we should, you know, talk to the board about doing an official ribbon cutting opening. You know, it might be a while. We need to, uh, Sean, you know, we need to say it would be scheduled now and make sure Sean gets invited. Um, you know, he won't be on the board, but, you know, just, Sean put so much work into it that, that we just need to not forget to do that. But trust me, we won't. <laughs> we'll make sure you're included, Sean. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Any other updates? I okay. Think we covered it. Yeah, we talked about it a lot. Uh, Joel, anything on the Rocky Mountain Greenway? Uh, nothing, nothing on the Rocky Mountain Greenway. Um, the only small item is the Rocky Flats Executive or Stewardship Committee had an executive meeting on Monday. It was open to the public. I don't have the minutes from that meeting yet, so I don't know what was discussed. As soon as I get those, I'll forward them on. The, um, the whole push for the Greenway just seems to have really slowed down. Remember, I mean, there was a time yeah. when we were getting new maps every meeting and new configurations, and it just well, seems to have stalled. It, it was, you know, Governor Hickenlooper's trail list 
that came out. And so I don't know if um, Governor Polis's administration doesn't have the same drive or there's just too many other things going on in the world right now. True. That, True. You know, the sampling has been an issue out mm -hmm. there. Uh, Jefferson Parkway shutting down may have some impact on it, um, but it has gone very quiet. Yeah, and I, I don't know if now that Superior owns CenturyLink that that, you know, that alternate path, you know, has some, maybe some more interest now that the land is, is municipality owned. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that will come up as, as the more and more happens. We saw the maps come out, the trail continued to shift further and further east. So, I mean, I think where this CenturyLink property is probably plays well into that. Um, there's still, you know, the idea that it would connect underneath Highway 128 near the existing lot that they built on uh, across the street from the High Plains Trail. Um, and everything I've heard from Boulder County, or no, yeah, Boulder County, if they remember which one's which, is that that's still the plan, is there would be a highway underpass from one lot to the other to connect into the South Boulder trail system. Okay. But the way around, do you remember, was the way around along 128? Like, so kind of up on where CenturyLink was and then it would have yeah. to cross McCaslin and then just sort of skirt along 128? I believe so. I'll see if I can pull up those maps. Like, like you mentioned, we've had 10 different maps and, yeah. and I'm not sure how many of the iterations I still have access to. Um, I'll look and see if I can dig one of those up. But there, there was one conceptual plan that had the trail running up the east side of Indiana and then crossing 128 over into the St. Francis trails we referenced earlier and then down the hill from there. Man, in an perfect world, it would go there, then down McCaslin, and then we could get that trail along McCaslin built with uh, <laughs> that money, and then maybe that would expedite the Colton Standard Trail, you know, co the standards of the Colton Trail, yeah. uh, you know, getting expedited to meander up the creek rather than the straight shot we have now. That's, that's like a, a perfect pie. topic to have with Boulder or Broomfield County, because that's all on their side. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good thing to talk about that let them know that century, I mean, they should know, but that that's all. Yeah, I agree, Sean. Okay, well, thank I do you, have to Joel. Point out that oh, yeah. not, not everyone supports any trails that go anywhere near Rocky Flats, so uh, further discussions. Oh, sure, and the one I was talking about would all be the bypass, right? They would all go yes. yeah. outside yeah. of Rocky Flats. Okay, Frank, anything you wanna bring up on the Raptor program uh, or anyone? Just a couple of quick uh, tidbits. You guys saw the note that came out from Peter uh, about a week and a half ago. A couple of updates. Um, unfortunately, he just did a recent tour. Uh, none of the screech owl boxes have owls in them. Uh, they are all being inhabited by squirrels. Uh, no, and then the, the Kestrel box that's in Community Park is also not occupied. Although I've seen Kestrels there myself. Uh, I know there's a nest somewhere around, um, but it's currently not occupied. Uh, Peter is, and, and he was working with a fellow named Scott, they're, they're thinking it might just be too much human activity uh, near, near that particular location in Community Park. Um, that trail gets a lot of use, uh, especially from, from bikers. Tony, those are the updates for now, but uh, he's going to keep on doing the monitoring and his team is moving forward. And I think he's recruited a couple more observers, including yours truly. So. Oh, awesome. Good for you, Frank. Yeah, it's fine. Thanks. Yeah, I sent you guys a picture this afternoon, actually. I don't know if you saw it, but that little stringy thing would be a snake. Yeah, uh, I was wondering that. Raptor, that. that tree is right behind the house here, and the house leads to the open space we've been talking about all day. So, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Uh, Marcy, anything you want to bring up on oil and gas? I actually have a question. Frank, is that really your backyard? It's not a fake picture? Oh, that would be the backyard, yeah. Oh, no, that one? No, that's uh, not a fake picture. That was me riding a uh, single tree made off her last Friday. Quiet. Oh, yeah, there's the I elk. Got the two, there were two elk there. Uh, and yeah, it was a great ride. Um, 
no prairie dogs though. That whole area was completely denuded of all prairie dogs, wiped out. Well, maybe we can move some over there. Now, I don't have anything, Ryan, on oil and gas. The last I saw, they had put it out for comment. Um, they're gathering the comments and then they're going to, I guess, issue regulations one day, but nothing's moving really fast right now. Everything's slow because no one's nowhere. Okay, thank you. And then Tracy, the conservation fund. Hmm. You all know everything that I know. So isn't that a beautiful finally, thing? Finally, finally, Tracy, finally. I never, I never knew that much anyway, but it's pretty awesome that it happened. You always <laughs> said, I can't talk about this. I think we hey, should leave. We'll leave this on I don't want to do anything here. to jeopardize this thing, so, you know. Well, well, Tracy was the same way, you know, Matt would try to give me updates every now and again, and he'd say, if you really want to know more, give me a call. And I just said, I don't, because I might say something that gets back somewhere and, you know, me knowing less is a better chance of not messing up this deal. So I, I didn't want to know. Yeah, and I think leaving it on is a great idea so we can learn about what happens with the conservation easements and the funding partners and et cetera. Et cetera. Yep, yep, okay. <laughs> So Tracy, is there any way that we get Justin Spring to look at any other properties in Superior? I've been thinking about that and I didn't discuss it with him since the very beginning. So the very beginning we talked about Zaharias versus CenturyLink and that was kind of his um, you know, expert assessment and then in communication with manager Matt. Um, so I, I don't know, I haven't broached the subject at all. Is that something I should do? Everyone think. Well, I thought Zacharias is gone. They're going to. No, it hasn't been right. The board has to approve a, a zoning change. So they're right. not building by right. So it's not a done deal. Okay. Now, I mean, it's interesting info that you gave about money tonight, Ryan. That's, I mean, it's not a big amount, but that's still money. Well, the other thing is, is the, the 400K a year, that expires in 2005. So in another five years, there's another 400K going into the fund. And by then, you know, tax revenue should be up also because of downtown Superior. So, uh, you know. One last thing I want to note before uh, everyone comments, they, those organizations were parcels. So when I first took on the map of everything, that's why it came down to Zaharias and CenturyLink because they spend their time, energy, and brilliance, in my opinion, on these huge chunks of land. I mean, I, my thought is it doesn't hurt to ask. I agree. He might, <laughs> he might just say I'm done in Superior, but yeah. he might say, you know, that one just has some interesting attributes. I mean, it's a huge challenge because essentially the bank account goes to zero and then starts ramping back up again. But with the reservoir and the yeah. interest from the birding community and other ways that they might be able to be creative to raise money to protect that land. And, you know, the other thing we said about that property was that because it is quasi judicial right now, right? We can't talk to the board about it, but they were fine with us having Justin take a look, but that's not being right. able to come, come back right. to the board. Right. I don't know if that still stands. We need to readdress. I think if he was interested, then we, we would ask, but might as well ask him. I mean, if there's any chance. Yeah, yeah I, you're right. I mean, you've got a strong community there that will fight for it. Tracy, do you remember if there was like an acreage requirement? I kind of remember that he was saying, you know, it's a certain number that they are really interested in and it was kind of a tiered approach. I have to look at notes. I don't remember offhand, Allison. But he'll tell us again if he'll say, no, you know, that's not enough or, you know, it's right next to a highway and you know, we're not interested. But the, the reservoir angle is huge. So Yeah. And when we first discussed the Harry's, he was working for the Trust for Public Land, not the Conservation. So uh, that may that's, be a, dif a difference too. So I'll just ask and let everyone know. That's a great yeah. point, Tracy. Yeah, that would be wonderful. I agree. Okay, everyone, that is the end of our agenda. So the meeting is adjourned at 739. Thank you all for your time Thank tonight. You. I really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See ya. Bye.
Do you guys want to go outside? <laughs>